Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at a volume problem where we can apply the washer method. Now to get started, make sure you understand the formula for the washer method, which I have written here in terms of R outer squared and R inner squared. Here, R outer and R inner, you always determine them relative to your axis of rotation. And notice for this problem, it's two parts where the only difference between them is the axis of rotation. And that's going to make a difference for determining R outer and R inner. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with part A. First, our region is bounded by two curves, y equals negative x squared plus 6 and y equals 2. So the region is really simple to sketch. It's an inverted parabola, shifted up 6 units, and then the bottom curve is the horizontal line y equals 2. All right, now for part A, we're going to be rotating this region about the x-axis and we're going to determine R outer and R inner relative to that axis of rotation, the x-axis, which has the equation y equals 0. So let's go ahead and draw that from our axis of rotation to the inner portion. That distance is what we would call R inner. And that simply is the distance from the x-axis to that curve, that horizontal line, which is 2. So R inner for part A is just 2. And if we draw symbolically what the outer radius looks like, go from the axis of rotation to the outer edge of the region, we have R outer there. And the distance from the x-axis up to that curve, that is exactly what the y or function value here gives you. So R outer, that's just negative x squared plus 6. All right. In order to properly set up your integral, we're going to need the bounds over the x-axis that we're going to be integrating over. And here, since the curves intersect, we want to find the points of intersection. And that's going to be really easy to do. We just set those two functions equal to one another, and we get a really simple equation, negative x squared plus 6 equals 2. And you can solve this a number of ways. The easiest way I'll probably is I'm going to add x squared and then subtract 2. So we'll get 4 equals x squared. And then you can easily solve that by taking a square root. And you'll get here x equals positive and negative 2. All right, so we have everything we need to properly set up our formula for the volume applying the washer method. All right, we're going to integrate from negative 2 to positive 2. And we are going to integrate pi times r outer squared minus r inner squared. So let's go ahead and simplify algebraically r outer squared minus r inner squared. And then we'll integrate that. All right, so just be careful here. We're going to take r outer and square it, so negative x squared plus 6, and then we're going to subtract the inner radius here squared as well. All right, just take your time. Properly multiply that out. This looks like we should get x to the fourth minus 6x squared minus 6x squared, so that's going to be minus 12x squared plus 36. And don't forget we have minus the inner radius squared. That's going to give us minus 4. And it looks like we can simplify that as x to the fourth minus 12x squared plus 32. All right, and that is what we just simplified here, r outer squared minus r inner squared. We just did all that algebra first. So let's set up our integral. This is going to be an integral going from negative 2 to positive 2. And then it's pi times r outer squared minus r inner squared, which we just simplified. So we integrate x to the fourth minus 12x squared plus 32. 
All right, and you can integrate this left as is, but it's gonna be a little bit tedious since you get some powers there that get rather large, like you're gonna get a fifth power of x, you're gonna get x cubed, and then plugging in negatives and subtracting is gonna get really tedious. What we can observe is that our function here is even. So in other words, the function that we're integrating here is even. We have a symmetric interval. So we can go ahead and apply our shortcut again, where we can double the integral from zero to two here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll pull the factor of pi out. We get a factor of two because we're gonna be doubling the integral from zero to two. And the function stays the same. All right, and that's a lot nicer because now when you plug in zero, the antiderivative will evaluate to zero. So let's finish. Find your antiderivative here, term by term, using the power rule. We're gonna get one fifth x to the fifth. All right, here you're gonna get a factor of one over three. 12 divided by three will give four, so we get minus four x cubed and then plus 32x. All right, and we're gonna evaluate that from x equals zero to x equals two. As we already mentioned, plug in zero to this antiderivative. That'll evaluate to zero. And the only thing left is when we plug in two, we have our factor of two pi out front. And if you take your time and plug that in, you're gonna get two to the fifth, 32 over five. And here, just plug that in, two cubed, eight times four minus 32, and then plus 64. And if you go ahead and simplify this with a common denominator, combine it all together, all your tedious calculations, which you don't really care about, here you'll end up getting 384 pi over five. And if you approximate that, this comes out to approximately 241.27 and then units cubed since we're calculating a volume integral here. All right, there we go. This was part A where we took our region and then rotated it about the x-axis or the line y equals zero. Very straightforward to set up. No real tricks to determine our outer or our inner. Let's go ahead and get to part B, where we change our axis of rotation, where we move it up one unit. For part B, the only thing that changes is the axis of rotation. So instead of rotating about the x-axis, we move that up one unit, and instead we rotate this region about the horizontal line, y equals one. Now, this has the effect of basically making the region closer to the axis of rotation, which should make the volume smaller. So in other words, compared to part A, we should expect a smaller volume for this part. All right, now the tricky part here is properly determining R outer and R inner, which do change. Now there's ways you can do this with subtracting, but I hate subtracting. I always like to start with the more basic way, addition. So let's go ahead and draw first what our inner and our outer look like. Again, they're gonna be measured relative to your axis of rotation, which we moved up one unit. So our inner looks like that. And let's go ahead and determine this with addition. Now, the whole distance from the x-axis to that curve that's exactly what y equals two gives you. So we're gonna say our inner, this distance right here, plus the distance from the x-axis to your axis of rotation is one. And what we should find is our inner plus one, that's this distance right here. That should equal that whole distance two. And here you can very easily, and it's kind of foolproof, solve that for our inner, and you get our inner equals two minus one, 
you get r inner as 1. All right, and we're going to go through the same sort of argument to determine r outer, again, from your axis of rotation up to the outer edge of your region. And again, we're going to set that up with addition. So let's first realize the total distance from the x-axis to that curve. That's exactly what the function value gives you. So what we should have is this total distance is negative x squared plus 6. And then we're going to think of that total distance there as basically it's going to be that unit, that distance there, 1, plus r outer. So let's write this as r outer plus 1. In other words, add those two parts together. You should get the total distance there, which is negative x squared plus 6. And again, you can easily solve this now for r outer. Subtract and you get r outer as negative x squared plus 5. All right, so we have everything we need to properly set up our volume integral. The bounds, the points of intersection, those stay the same. They're still negative 2 and positive 2. It's just slightly different versions for the formulas of r inner and r outer. So let's go through the tedious algebra first squaring r outer and then subtracting r inner squared. All right, so let's just take our time with that. So take r outer, negative x squared plus 5, and we're going to square that. And now we subtract 1 squared. I'll write that as minus 1 squared just for emphasis, remembering that we square r outer and r inner. And if we simplify, expand, multiply out the square term here, it looks like you get x to the fourth minus 5x squared minus 5x squared, so that should be minus 10x squared, but plus 25, and then minus 1, and then we can easily simplify that we get plus 24. So x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 24. And that is, again, the function that we're going to be integrating here. And of course, don't forget your factor of pi. So let's set it up. It's pretty much the same as before at this point. We have an integral from negative 2 to 2. We have our factor of pi. And then we integrate r outer squared minus r inner squared, which we just simplified to x to the fourth, minus 10x squared plus 24. All right, and this is as straightforward as part a. Here, you can again pull out the factor of pi. And because we have still an even function, over a symmetric interval, you can double the integral from 0 to 2. So let's go ahead and apply that. Factor out pi and apply your property here. So we get a factor of 2 times pi. Integral goes from 0 to 2. And the function stays the same. All right, and now we can easily find an antiderivative. So we'll keep our factor of 2 pi. And if we integrate term by term, we should get 1 fifth x to the fifth. Looks like we should get minus now 10 thirds x cubed. And then plus 24x. And again, we evaluate that now from x equals 0 to x equals 2. Same thing as part a, plug in x equals 0. That's going to kill off that whole antiderivative when you evaluate at 0. And here we're going to evaluate at 2. Here's where it gets a little bit tedious because you have now terms with different denominators. But if you go ahead and go through that and take your time, you should get your answer as 832 pi. And you can see your common denominator there will be 15, and that's all over 15. 
All right, now we again expected because the region is closer to your axis of rotation that the volume should be smaller. And if you crank out a decimal approximation for that, this is your exact answer. Your approximate answer, at least to two digits for your decimal representation, comes out to 174.25. And that is indeed smaller than the volume we got in part A. All right, here the tricky part, the only difference was taking your time to determine your new formulas for R outer and R inner. So this argument, adding pieces together and then solving, that tends to work for a lot of problems. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you're learning a lot, support the channel, like and subscribe.